What is up guys, it's Arnek and welcome back. Let's break some stuff. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just feel like breaking things, you know? What? What the fuck? You got issues, man. Why? What's wrong? D do you even listen to yourself? What are you talking about? <laughs> this whole pandemic situation? Pfft, really got your mental made. Yeah, whatever. Can I... I really don't know what their problem was, but let's get into this, shall we? So there are quite a few Pixie Poly tutorials out there, and pretty much every single one of them will show you how the effect works using a text layer, which is breaking into pieces, similar to this one. And if they go really crazy, maybe they even spare out some parts of the text. And that's fair enough. If that is all you need and looking for, well, good for you, but let's be real. Would you post something like this on your Instagram to show your skills? Yeah, didn't think so. So instead, let's look into something a little more Instagrammable. And actually, let's first hop into Photoshop. I snapped this photo last year in Helsinki. It became one of my favorite spots to take photos because I just loved the looks of it. So this will be our base photo, right? And what I want to do with this one is to separate this text from the background window. I already prepared this so you don't have to watch me doing all of that live. Basically all I did is cutting out the object of interest with a simple layer mask, which you can see is not even really detailed. Then on a separate layer I removed the text part using the clone as damp tool to get a clean background. You can either already label the layers accordingly in Photoshop or just do that later on in After Effects. And that's already it for Photoshop, so go ahead and save your file and head back into After Effects. Now we can just get rid of these and import our Photoshop file. Hit Ctrl or Command plus I to import. Navigate to your file and make sure under Import As you have Composition selected instead of Footage and click Import. After Effects for some reason will ask you again how you would like to import the Photoshop file. Make sure that editable layer styles is activated and click OK. You now should have a new composition named after your Photoshop file, as well as a folder with the different Photoshop layers in it. And they are already named as we labeled them in Photoshop, which makes it easier for us to identify which element is what. So I'm just going to take the background and the text layer as we don't need the backup here. Highlight both and drag and drop them into your timeline. Now my image is quite big, so I'll have to scale it down by quite a bit. As I intend to make an Instagram post out of this, I set my composition size to square 1080 by 1080. But obviously you can set your composition to whatever you need. Okay, from here on we have to pre-compose the text layer. Otherwise the shards would just vanish because of the layer boundaries. So with the layer highlighted, simply hit keyboard shortcut Ctrl or Command plus Shift plus C. Name the composition something like text layer again and make sure move all attributes is selected. We do not have to open up the composition and now hit enter. Okay great, now search for the effect CC pixel poly and apply it to the new composition. I really do not like what the effect does initially, which is this ugly split right at the start and the parts just fall down out of frame. But thankfully, as with anything in After Effects, we can alter its behavior. So here is how I like to set this up. Reduce the force all the way down from 100 to 1 and change the gravity to 0, or at least really low. The shards tend to react quite heavily to the gravity settings. Keeping it at 0 will make them sort of float around the center, which personally looks best to me most of the time. I also reduce the spinning considerably. Usually I keep it somewhere between 3 and 20 degrees, depending on the situation. Let's also set the force center somewhere around here. Or actually, let's try what it does when we place it further down. Might fit the scene a little better, I think. Now continue with reducing the direction randomness a little and increase speed randomness. Grid spacing really depends on the size of your file. 
In my case, something around 20 looks good to me. And finally, if you want the animation to start at a specific time, you can also set the start time. Now, let's have a look what we have done so far. Well, it's okay, but I think we can do better. Let's duplicate the composition layer with controller command and D and disable the effects for the one beneath. By the way, if you can't see these handles, simply click down here or hit F4 on your keyboard to toggle between the modes. So now we have a stable text layer in the background to see what we're working with. I want to create a few masks, so only portions of the object are being cut off. These can be really random and don't have to be accurate at all. I'll just put some here, maybe there, and maybe another gap in here. Something like this looks good to me. So here's what we got now. Because of our layer duplicate, the text still shows after the pixel poly effect did its job. To remove those portions, because, well, when things dissolve, they normally don't stay intact, right? All you have to do is highlight all masks of the effect layer, hit Ctrl or Command plus C to copy, highlight the base layer and paste with Ctrl or Command plus V. And then set all masks from add to subtract to invert their effect. Nice, now we're getting somewhere. And actually, we could just leave it at that. But we also could make it even more interesting. I feel like the shards are kinda getting lost the further they get into the darker areas of the image. So let's make them glow. Again, I will use my new favorite glow effect, deep glow. Link is in the description. Reduce the glow radius. Adjust the intensity and maybe also change the threshold and threshold smoothness. Let's see how it looks. Quite a bit better, if you ask me. But I'm not so sure about the beginning, so let's animate the radius. Start somewhere around the beginning of the effect. Set a keyframe for radius of zero. Go down the timeline by maybe one or two seconds and set another keyframe with whatever value you like. So I guess 250 for me. If you need to, you can also go into the tint and change the glow color to make it pop a little more. All right, and as a last thing, I want to add more movement to the scene. So I will create a new camera. So right click, new camera. These settings might seem a little intimidating and it would take some time to cover all of them. If you're interested to learn more about the camera modes in After Effects and would like a tutorial for it, let me know in the comments below. But for now, simply go with the settings you get right there. Now open up the position settings of your new camera and set a keyframe at the beginning of your composition. Move all the way to the end and move the camera closer to the image by increasing the Z value. To add a little more depth to the scene, let's separate the text and the background a little more. So first, highlight both text compositions and pre-compose them with controller command plus shift and C. Name it maybe like fragmented, move all attributes and click OK. Now turn both layers, background and the fragmented composition into 3D objects by activating the box icon over here. Remember, if you can't see those, simply click down here or hit F4 on your keyboard. For some reason, the pixel poly layer will be gone at this point. But there is an easy fix for that. Open up the position value and set the Z value to negative 1. To get the mentioned separation, let's animate the fragmented composition in a similar way to the camera. One keyframe at the beginning move to the end and another keyframe with maybe minus 70 or something for the Z value. Well, and there you have it. So what are your thoughts on this one? Let me know in the comment section down below. You also might want to check out this video. It is another way to subtly animate your still photography. So if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. 
I release a new video every week, so make sure to ring that bell to be notified and step by step up your filmmaking skills. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!